The Lord is with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of Christ. other beliefs, be they of this world or perhaps more sacred. We hear of this happening uh, in today's gospel story. The Jews approached Jesus, despite the fact that they had witnessed miracles, listened to his, the teachings that he offered. Their belief system did not enable them to see the Messiah, even though their belief system prophesied that they were to be expecting a Messiah. They couldn't see Jesus as the Messiah while he was standing right there in front of them. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. What was going to convince them They witnessed the things that he said and he did. And Jesus was certain that no matter how much he yelled out that he was the Messiah, those Jews were just not going to believe it. They were heavily influenced by a very strong and strict tradition, a long-standing, hard-fought, God-blessed culture that had given them everything. And they couldn't wrap their minds around what Jesus was saying or what he was doing because their minds were wrapped around what they knew and what they had followed and what they were influenced by. To follow Jesus would be to give up what they and their parents and their grandparents and their grandparents, grandparents fought courageously to hold on to. And you've read in the New Testament some of the stuff that these people went through. They were doggedly devoted, loyal to a fault, blinded by history, over-dependent on the safety of what was. And if not over-dependent, at least very comfortable. 
They knew who they were grounded in their tradition. Jesus tried to call them beyond it. Is it really that difficult for us to understand the struggle they had? Even in their tradition, there was a place made for them to move beyond what had been already given to them by a Messiah that was to come. So there was built right in an expectation of things to change. Jesus said to them, you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. That's a very difficult line, by the way. Many people trip over that one. You do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. It's like the cart before the horse question, isn't it? But there is inherent within this exchange a significant implication, and it is this. To have faith, to be able to step into a new awareness of the spiritual truths that are around us, we must first pass through some process of disassociating with the world as we know it and bond with the movement of spirit. And in my experience, this requires a vulnerability, a vulnerability that I think is most often prompted if not forced upon us suddenly by disillusionment, a sense of being let down, if not outright hurt and harmed by those things that we have come to depend upon and what we did at one time call truth. This is a growing realization that the answers provided us at one time in our history no longer fill our hearts with the joy that we thought that they would. Maybe at one time, but no longer. And many of these influential beliefs we have inherited, these influential beliefs that no longer work, come from a time past, implanted in many cases by people who meant only the best for us. Now this can sound a bit judgmental, but I really feel a lot of empathy for those who influenced me in my life by giving me what they could from what they knew. Now some of it is worth holding on to. And some of it I need to grow beyond. Spiritual development is a growing beyond what was. In spirit, there is always this forward movement, this forward direction, this forward growth process. And it is an evolutionary process and nothing less than that. We must take one step at a time, one generation building on top of the next, like building a foundation on top of which more can then be added. We will grow beyond our parents' spiritual beliefs as our parents had grown beyond their parents and as our children will grow beyond ours. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me.
kind of recognition, that kind of deep faith comes only from an open heart and an open mind. An innocence, if you will. A return to childlike wonder. Certainly a childlike hunger for truth and direction. Unfortunately, but it is the way of it often, this kind of openness comes about when our worlds get turned upside down for one reason or another. When there is an undeniable need to rewrite the scripts in our life that no longer work for us. As I see it, this difficult scripture today challenges us to disassociate from influences that limit our ability to see life more clearly. To see life through spiritual lenses. And the story challenges us to bond to influences that call us forward, though uncomfortable they may be, towards a lifestyle based on love and forgiveness and compassion. For these are the spiritual truths that Jesus stood for. God blessed truths that were meant to revolutionize what already was and to carry us to a place beyond what we already know, to a place in which we will flourish in an interrelated, grace-filled dance with life. 